Good evening, everyone. My name is Rain Augustine with News Now from Fox. Right now, I am joined with Dr. Chin Hong. Doctor, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. You're so welcome, Rain. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. So coronavirus vaccine, it's, it's been the major headlines for the past few weeks. Can you update everyone on the latest information that we have? Well, everyone knows how amazing the vaccines are in terms of efficacy with 95% in both Pfizer and Moderna. But the update is based on a vaccine summit that happened yesterday. And what they showed is that uh, the vaccine was not only efficacious in the overall population, but it was you know, effective whether or not you were male or female, uh, uh, regardless of what your race or ethnicity was, and regardless of what your weight was, uh, which is important because obese patients had bear, borne the brunt of COVID you know, uh, complications as well. Now, this level of efficacy, is this usual for most vaccines? No, not at all. In fact, when you think about the influenza vaccine, that's only about 40 to 60% uh, effective. And that might surprise a lot of people. And it's because every year we give the flu vaccine, but it's a guessing game because the flu, flu virus changes every year in the type that's circulating. Whereas COVID is COVID, it's not going to change a lot from year to year. It's a serious problem, but it's kind of basic. Okay. Now, experts say that vaccines normally take up to five years to be developed. How was this vaccine developed at such record speed? So there are two aspects to developing a vaccine. One aspect is the science, of course. And the second aspect, equally important in terms of time, is the bureaucracy. So in Operation Warp Speed, they really didn't touch the science uh, speed. The science is really progressing rapidly. And speaking from someone in medicine, I would say that, as many people know, it's not only scientific discoveries in vaccines, it's scientific discoveries in all of medicines that's breathtaking. So that actually is right on par with what I would expect. The second aspect, which is a red tape, is one that they really tried to cut down with Operation Wall Speed. And accelerating that approval is really preserving the science, but cutting down the red tape. Okay, now I'm really gonna need your medical expertise when this, for this question. Correct me if I'm wrong, but to my knowledge, traditional vaccines are where a weakened version of the virus is administered to patients, but the COVID-19 vaccines are a little bit different, right? Can you explain that for us? Yeah, so so when people think about a vaccine, and like in the first vaccine, uh, we think about giving the body a weakened version of the real deal virus, and the body develops antibodies against it. The science has developed so tremendously currently that we don't have to give the real deal uh, virus anymore, which makes it much safer for the public. In this case, what we are doing is we're giving a message to the body. It's a messenger RNA vir uh, vaccine. And the message thus tells the body, hey body, just become a factory for making these little bits of proteins on the surface of COVID. So you see these protein spikes, that's what the body's making um, for, the, for the immune system to see and get trained on. And it's not the rest of the virus, it's just these little bits of protein spikes. And that's the message that's being delivered. So it's completely safe. When you get these symptoms after, it's not getting COVID, it's actually getting the effects of having your immune system trained when it sees the little bits of protein called protein spikes. Now, have these RNA vaccines been used and distributed before? So this is the first time it's been uh, developed uh, for an infection that's on the cusp of being FDA approved for emergency use authorization, but it's uh, being developed in lots of other areas so it's not new in terms of in the lab or in science but it is a new kind of vaccine which i personally think makes it safer because again you're just delivering a message you're not delivering a live virus like in the other types of vaccines and the message gets destroyed after a certain time so after you you make these proteins the messenger gets killed so to speak 
It definitely sounds like a um, medical breakthrough, but because it is so new, I know a lot of people are very, for example, more than half of the firefighters in New York City said that in an internal survey, they wouldn't take the vaccine. So what can you say, what advice can you give to people that are on the fence when it comes to receiving this vaccination? So I would say that one of the important things to think about is that um, there have been about tens of thousands of people who have been volunteers to get the vaccine already. And they have a head start on probably most of the general population by the time it rolls out of about a year. Because if you think about the summer of this year, that's when they started. And we know that most serious things in the history of vaccines occur in the first six weeks. So the fact that these people have had all this time and not had serious effects that were linked to the vaccine is really reassuring to me. The second aspect is, like we mentioned, it's not a live virus, so you can't get an infection from it. And you know, when you think about this, the side effects, they're mainly your immune system trying to get trained against uh, what is to come, hopefully, and prevent that real deal infection. And, and the third aspect is really, you know, again, these all of the data we have so far in safety from the side effects um, are, are generally mild and they're seen hours after the vaccine and they don't occur in everyone. Speaking of those side effects, can we go a little bit more into detail for those who will get the vaccine? What can they expect? So the side effects are similar to when people get the flu shot, except probably just a little bit more of folks will experience it. And you mainly experience it with the second shot, not much with the first shot. And the reason why you experience it more with the second shot or the booster is because your immune system is getting really revved up. And that feeling that you get will result in that antibody response, we think lasting for much longer. So we hope that it'll last for years. Um, and the side effects specifically are a local reaction at the site where they give you the vaccine. And in terms of the body uh, effects, you may get uh, fatigue and uh, headaches. Those are probably the most common in about, you know, a little under 50% uh, by the second shot. And then um, some people would get uh, fevers, but they go away after a day. You can take ibuprofen or not. Some people said they didn't have to take anything and it will go away. Um, and, and so those are the main major kind of side effects that people with, may experience. I think it's important to know because again, unless you had COVID before that wasn't diagnosed at the time you got the infection, these symptoms that you get feel like you're getting an infection, but that's really the effect of your immune system revving up and, and, and assembling the army so that when the real deal virus comes, it pounces on it and it never sets up shop in your body. So um, most people with the first shot wouldn't get many symptoms. The second shot, I think you may get something that feels like, you know, maybe some muscle aches, some headache. Um, in 25% of people, people, they may get fever um, that goes away without even any intervention. And, and that's kind of what we expect with the vaccine. Okay. Now, the UK, they're investigating possible allergic reactions that are linked to the Pfizer vaccine. How do these allergic reactions differ from regular, normal, to be expected side effects? Uh, so the allergic reactions are similar to any kind of allergic reaction people may have to other, you know, say antibiotics, for example, like, um, you know, you, there are different kinds of allerg allergic kind of reactions. So I think people may get allergies just in regular life. For example, if by the time you vaccinate millions of people or tens of thousands of people, people may get things that may not be associated with a vaccine. So I think that's what they're trying to figure out. People may also have allergies to certain components of vaccines. So if you have had a reaction to a previous vaccine, you may definitely want to talk to your doctor about it. But we don't expect that to be very common. Um, but definitely, uh, if you're worried about it, talk to your uh, healthcare professional before. Dr. Chin Hong, if there is one takeaway that you would like people to take home from this interview, what would it be? I would say, please embrace the vaccine. I hope that uh, enough time would have elapsed from the volunteers and from when other folks get it. Uh, it's not live. And we all need to be vaccinated, not just for ourselves, 
but to protect the whole community. Because again, that whole concept of herd immunity means that, you know, we are like a herd of animals and we're protecting the weak and the vulnerable at the back of the herd if they don't respond to the vaccine. So we need 70% or more of folks to get vaccinated ideally. Okay, Dr. Shin Hong, thank you so much. Thanks so much, Rain.